Hello, it is Thursday, September 5th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday crossword today, which means we're going to have potentially the most ambitious or intricate theme of the week. And I've also uh, I've been told by someone who's already solved today's puzzle that it's fun. It is a fun theme. So uh, I don't know what that means, but I'm looking forward to it. And this fun edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Michael, Lakehouse Bros, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster, the incorrigible Sheeler Beeler, and the indefinable Charlie Paget. Thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign. They do keep this series going and make it a sustainable part of my daily work. For that, I'm very grateful. Thank you to those five and to everybody who backs the Patreon campaign at any level. If you'd like to do so, you can head to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link. You'll find there the bonus videos available to patrons as well as for benefactors like those five, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug. Thank you again to all of them. And um, thanks as well if you subscribe on YouTube, which of course is a big help. You can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community linked in the description field. So having said all that, let's get on to today's hopefully fun a puzzle themed Thursday crossword by Joe Dini, who's constructed around, well, I think a couple of dozen puzzles for the New York Times. And it was edited once again by Joel Faliano. Let's start solving, see how we do today. Domains could be areas, um, you know, fields, maybe. I'm going to try areas just because it fits and there's no, oh, sorry. I've just noticed there are some of the lines delineating the cells are squiggly. Some are dotted and some are shaded. Oh, and some are kind of slanted in a repeated manner, like roof tiles or something. Now that's really interesting. Okay, well, I don't know what to make of that just yet, but I'm intrigued. Let's um, look at this. Museum of Bad Blank, Boston Attraction. Oh, Museum of Bad Art. I've never actually been there, but I've, I have heard of it. Vintage car initials, REO as in REO Speedwagon, which these days probably more famous for the band who drew their name from it. Swallows one's, swallow was one's pride is to eat crow or to eat one's hat or to eat humble pie, to eat dirt, to eat shame. I'm saying everything except for what it actually is because none of those fits. Well, shame does, but that's not really an expression. All right. Aptly named novelist Charles Reed, maybe. I mean, that would, if you're a novelist, perhaps that you create material that is read, that would be an appropriate name. Let's see if that works. Arrange temporarily. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if there's a rebus going on here. I don't know, though. Uh, piece CU, maybe? CU, I'm out. I'm still not sure. I mean, a read is a complete guess here. I'm just guessing that it is that and it is spelled that way, but I'm not certain. Spacecraft name since the 1960s. Soyuz, the... Um, formerly Soviet, I suppose now Russian um, line of, of, of spacecraft, that lineage. So what is this? Arranged temporarily. There, there must be something going on here. Oh, no, it isn't. It isn't. It's ad hoc. If you, if you have an ad hoc meeting, you have a sort of temper, you, you, it's, it's not a standing meeting. It's, it's been assembled ad hoc. Uh, it's been assembled sort of just now for for particular immediate purposes. Okay, so that's what's going on. So tried getting, so there, that isn't thematic. I thought maybe it would be. Tried getting on a jumbotron, say. Uh, might have something wrong here. What was this again? Swallows one's pride eats. Yeah, that seems, hmm, this doesn't look good. Maybe this is part of the theme. Because I don't see how tried getting in a jumbotron starts with to the. So let's just leave it for now. Brink. If you're on the brink, you're on the ledge, the precipice. Um, I don't know. Okay, what about this? Looney Tunes, nickname Taz, the Tasmanian devil, I would think. Like the Secretary of Commerce in the U.S. presidential line of succession. Is it third? Seriously? Maybe. That seems very high for the Secretary of Commerce. Um, let's, maybe it is. I just can't think of another order that would, you know, another kind of um, term that would fit here, that, that, that would delineate, that would sort of iterate numbers. Let's see. Um, Moonlander acronym. Maybe this is wrong. 
maybe it's like, yeah, it's like, never mind. I was going to say maybe it's a number, but no, it's like the Secretary of Commerce. So it has to be an adjective, like third, the, th the third one. Hmm. I don't know, but this looks strange. Dinner. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I was looking at. This Moonlander acronym. Yeah, this I'm not sure I found. So maybe it is third and I just don't know what that is. Dinner with minimal cleanup. Don't know. Or maybe something like a TV dinner or something like that. I don't know. Uh, scarecrow topper, perhaps. Straw hat or something. Maybe third is wrong. Horse-drawn carriage. I don't know. Okay, what am I missing? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Oh, tenth. Okay, sorry. That that That's much more plausible for the Secretary of Commerce. I was going to say that. Maybe it's absurd for that cabinet position to be third. Let's see. So what's the Moonlander acronym? Oh, uh, it's not L-E-V. It's something like that. It's L-E something. Lunar, lunar something. Uh, lunar exploration vehicle, L-E-V, lunar exploration. It's not L-E-V, but, but it is L-E something. Result of a bad investment, a loss. You could lose money on a bad investment. Dinner with minimal clean. Oh, okay. So yes, one a one pot meal or something like that. Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to be wanted it to be originally, but third didn't allow for it. So that's good. Fund as a four hundred one k. You invest or you withhold. So four hundred one k is a is a an, uh, tax advantage retirement instrument in the United States, and often employers will make contributions into it to match employee contributions. So does that help with this? This might not be one pot meal. It could be something else. I think conceptually it's something like that, but it could be a different phrase. So I'll leave it and move on. Scarecrow topper. Okay, yes. So this could be straw hat, which was was disallowed by third, but is enabled by tenth. Horse-drawn carriage. Oh, not a dray. Um, this looks familiar, but I can't place it. So, and what's this again? Tried getting on a Jumbotron. Say. So Jumbotron, I think, is the large screen um, on which all sorts of things are are broadcast in a, um, a sports match, like the score, but also often switches to shots from the crowd. To, oh, to the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 I get it now waved to the camera. If you waved to the camera, because this is surrounded by these wavy lines, uh, you tried getting on a Jumbotron, say. That's one way you tried to get on, was waving to the camera, hoping that they would switch to that feed in the control room. Okay, that's what it is. So to, waved to the camera. Right, so this is going to be dashed, maybe? Enjoyed some cozy reading. No, maybe not dotted? Um... I don't know. I can't quite see it. Slanted maybe here or something? Attacked. Oh, tilted. Attacked imaginary enemies in an idiom. Tilted at windmills. So this is referring to um, Don Quixote and his um, sort of fantastical imaginations of his uh, mundane life. Well, his sort of mundane circumstances imagined as grand heroic quests. So he saw the windmills as big monsters and he would tilt at them like a knight jousting. All right, make money dishonestly. And then what is what is this? Oh, this is shaded. Oh, made money dishonestly. Something about shady practices or made money dishonest. Gray, gray market something. Screen, uh, I don't know, I can't, can't see it. Uh, this one is very surprising. Enjoyed some cozy reading. Something the book. I don't know. Approaching empty. If you're low on fuel, maybe you're approaching empty. Uh, the three-body problem author blank si Oh, uh, Not sure. I've not read that. Let's see. Is it Lin maybe? I don't know. Aetna alternative. So Aetna is an insurance company, I think. So what would be an, an alternative? Geico? That's not long enough. Um, I think that's what Aetna is. Let's keep looking around. Singer DeFranco, Annie DeFranco. Paperless means of entry, some kind of key card. Or, or no, paperless means of entry. What does that mean? Entry, paperless. What would be a means of entry that could use paper and therefore could also be paperless? Uh, 
I, I don't really know what that's getting at, to be honest. Okay, National Spirit of England Gin is, is famously associated with England. You often see London Dry Gin. Uh, Spanish City on the Costa del Sol. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't think that's really annoying. Okay. I, I, I know where that I know where the Costa del Sol is generally, you know, geographically, but I, I can't think of city names. All right. Well, I've got to find some place that's more productive. Inverse trig function. Right. So inverse... You have some you have things like sine, cosine, tangent, cosine, secant, cosecant. I don't I don't. There are probably other ones I'm forgetting that are inverses, but I'm not sure what that is. Could this be an S as, as it ends with cosine? Brink. Yes, if you're on the brink, you're on the cusp. I didn't think of that for some reason. Oh, curl up with a book. A curled. Are all these curls? I can't. Sorry, I can't tell if these are. I think it's. I think it's curled up with a book. Enjoyed some cozy reading. It doesn't look like curls to me. I'm on this tiny little laptop monitor, um, and I can barely see, and I can barely even read the clues, to be honest. Um, so there we go. Okay. I think that must be right. I don't understand why. I'm sure it would be more obvious if I were viewing this in a pr in printed form or on a larger screen, but I'm, I'm sure that's the answer. Curled up with a book. I mean, that's a very common phrase. All right. So what have we not seen? What do you even need me for? What? No, it's not going to be what. Why am I here? Yes. And the reason I say it wouldn't have had what in it is because the clue does, and we're not going to repeat a word from the clue in the answer, unless it's specifically for thematic reasons, but 99% of the time you won't be doing that. So Etna alternatives. Oh, Lou, Lou, L-I-U, I bet is the, the author's name. Let's see if that works. Does that, I still don't, I'm still not sure of the Etna alternative. Oh, Humana, something like that. That's, that's a company. I didn't even know they were an insurance company, but I've seen the name of that company. That might be it. So dinner with minimal cleanup, one pot. Yeah, it is one pot meal. I think that's maybe what I had, but uh, I removed it out of uncertainty. Paperless means of entry. Oh, E. It's going to be an E word. It's paperless. So it's E for electronic. E titles, like title to a house. E. Oh, E ticket. Oh, oh, I see. A ticket is a, is a form of paper you'd use to gain entry to a show or a transport option or something. Okay, so you have an E ticket. Probably you wouldn't refer to that on the on public transport, but you might for I don't know a play or a film or something if you're seeing it in the cinema. All right, not. Not crazy about the E-words, but, but there it is. Where overflow stock might be kept, the back room or, or just in back, maybe. Uh, fund as a 401k. Pay into, right. You pay into your 401k to, to make contributions to it, to invest in your retirement fund. Okay, so island that's home to most of the world's wild orangutans. Borneo? Sounds very plausible to me. Ditto? Me too, or I am too, something like that. I think it has to be I am too to be three letters. Let's try it. Equine hybrid with striped, oops, that's not what I meant to look at. Uh, Hollywood with the, the, oh, the biz, people refer to sort of the film business, the film biz. Uh, so that's that, show business, I guess. Equine hybrid with striped legs, right, okay. So it's a zebra hybrid. Equine hybrid with striped legs. z like a Reebok, I it's not that. Uh, two words. Maybe I have something wrong. This doesn't look good, does it? Oh, I do too, maybe ditto. I do too, I bet that's what it is. So it's an ode, it's the official, it's the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword, the ode, never gone for long. That's got to be one of the most common answers in, in crossword history, New York Times crossword anyway. Unit equivalent to 16.5 feet. I have no idea. Uh, that's disconcerting because I don't know what this equine hybrid is. Loud in a way, neon, co loud colors. Okay. 
Oh, zidonk, like a zebra donkey? A rod. I mean, a rod sounds like a slightly archaic measurement. That must be it. Okay, so I think that's right. We're going to move on. Inverse trig function, yes, I'm not sure. The raptors on scoreboards, I'm not sure. Uh, natural treatment for insect bites. Is it aloe, the official medicinal plant of the New York Times crossword, joining its official cousin, the ode? Ode to aloe might be an appropriate uh, theme for a crossword. Swallows one's pride. Eats. Oh, it is eats crow. Why did I think that wasn't? I think I forgot about the S in eats or something, and I thought the next word needed to be five letters long. It is eats crow. That's what That was my first thought, I think. Okay. Inverse trig function. I don't know. Seek cosines. I, that's probably nothing. The raptors on scoreboards, right? Not sure. What about this? Uh, no, this. Wait, what is happening? Oh, space bar isn't rotating my... Sp let's see. Pressing the space bar should toggle between a cross and downs. I wonder how that setting was lost. I feel it's, I've been using it for ages. Yes, there we go. That's what I wanted. Slightly is ajar. If a door is slightly open, it's ajar. In, oh, arc. I forgot about arc. Arc arc cosine. Yes, okay, there's so many different trigonometric functions, all of which sort of define ratios, and um, I just forgot it. Okay, the raptors on scoreboards. I don't know what that is. Hershey candy wrapped in gold foil is Rolo. Jor, this looks weird. Maybe a jar is wrong. I, it probably is wrong, because even in my example, it didn't quite match because I said the door is open, it's slightly open, it's a jar. But a jar doesn't mean slightly, a jar means slightly open specifically. So a tad or a bit, something like that. Uh, the Raptors. Tor, oh, Tor, T O R could be Toronto. So I bet it's Toronto Raptors. That sort of sounds right. So probably a tad. And then that allows our official medicinal plant, aloe, to remain. Here we have easy there, Fido, down boy, you might say to a dog. And uh, ill will is, um, how could I not see what this is? You wish someone ill, enmity, there we go. Yes, you have enmity for someone, you have ill will and, and you know, possibly distrust. Sp oh, Malaga, Malaga, <laughs> Spanish city on the Costa del Sol. That is the city I was trying to think of. That is it, okay, that's right, for sure. And then uh, interdict, to interdict something is to ban it, to prohibit it. And then, like the Rockefellers, Roosevelt's, and Rothschild, they're old money. These are, I guess, sort of, you know, long-standing families with sort of dynastic wealth. All right. Um, all of which start with R. Excites. If you excite someone, you arouse them. So arouse. Oh, no. Excites plural. It doesn't fit. Uh, uh, excites. I'm not sure, actually. Big name in bubbly... Moet, like the champagne, Moet et Chandon. Could be. Let's try the crosses and see. Uh, someone point. Someone observed last time I had to pronounce this on the video that uh, Moet should be pronounced Moet, but that actually isn't isn't the case. Even though it's a French brand, and the um, man for whom it's named, uh, well, one of the two men, Moet, Moet uh, was French. He was of. German, I think, descent and, and pronounced his name with the hard T as it would have been traditionally. And that, that remains um, accepted pronunciation to this day of that particular brand. Anyway, Lahayam would be um, to life, I think, is basically what that toast means. <coughs> Excuse me. Kid's toy that comes in a can. Play-Doh. Yes, okay. And excites, oh, amps up. That's what it is. All right, sorry. I'm going to pause quickly just to take a sip of water here. Okay, and I'm back. Sorry about that. I just uh, didn't want to risk coughing. Um, so what's this? Annoy over time. To sort of wear on somebody is to annoy, annoy them over time. And polite address. You could address someone as sir. Uh, what a high-altitude balloon might be mistaken for, a UFO. I'm sure that happens all the time. Uh, to corral, animals say, would be to pen them in. Vaccine shot, e.g., would be a dose. I mean, one shot of vaccine is one dose of medication. Pure group, 
eyes? Pure, oh, does it mean, no, what does that mean? Peer group. Oh, of course, because your eyes see things. They peer at things, of course, of course. All right. Member of the fam could be cis in three letters ending with S, member of the family. What comic sounds is sans, with, is its serifs. So serifs being the little sort of feet that you can observe, for instance, in this font at the top of the page, that T, the little feet that drop off its strokes are serifs, and uh, comic sans does not have them. Although I think on a few letters it sort of almost does. But anyway, uh, letters on some lotion bottles, SPF, sun protection factors. Sun protection factor, sorry. Like home devices with advanced capabilities, they're said to be smart devices. More or less true, I would say, case by case. The long way there, the long way there. Oh, a limo, a stretch limousine would be a long way to be taken to a place to get there. Noted facial feature of Einstein informally. This is mustache, stash. Yeah, there we go. So contraction of mustache. Oh, let's look at this again. Oh, pick one's pocket? Make money dishonestly. Pick one's pockets? Made money, picked. Oh, is this picked? Yes, okay. It appears on my screen from a distance to be gray, shaded cells. But in fact, they aren't. They're... they're, they're numerous little lines. So is that, that's picked, I suppose, how you would describe that. So this is picked one's pockets. That's how one made money dishonestly in this case. Okay, good. So that, that's, these are all perfectly reasonable. Just two of them have been hard for me to discern on this screen. Anyway, to, if one really put someone off, they irked them. And a crane look alike, a heron, they're both waiting, long-legged waiting birds. Famous 50s flop, the Edsel. I mean, this is certainly, I don't know if it comes up enough to be an official answer, but if there were an official automotive flop of the New York Times crossword, it would 100% absolutely be the Edsel, and I doubt there would even be a second place. That's the Ford Edsel, named for Henry Ford's son. All right, Fanny's, uh, well, at least in, <laughs> in American English anyway, this means keisters, means something, or your rear end means something different in British English. Uh, blank mess, English dessert, eaten, uh, speaking of British English, eaten mess is uh, an English dessert with kind of f fruit and cream. Okay, trumpet, uh, to tout someone, to trumpet them, to sort of extol their virtues. High fat diet, the keto diet, you know, no carbs and other things. Uh, debtor's letters, IOU, so you, if you are in debt, you might give someone an IOU to indicate what you owe them. Trumpet, tout, and then au contraire, it, it, it isn't, you might say. I disagree. And there we go. That was the Thursday crossword. Great theme. I wish I wasn't, um, wish I hadn't been hindered in my appreciation of it by the circumstances of my solving uh, while traveling. But I think it came through. I think ultimately the full effect came through, which is some, in some cases I needed to sort of backwards solve what was going on with the specific lines here. So we had wave, waved to the camera, curled up with a book, uh, tilted at windmills, and finally picked one's pockets. And I don't, did we have, I don't think we had a reference to the theme in here, did we? I don't think we had a revealer. I don't remember having had one. No. So this is one of those themes that we must simply identify and solve ourselves. And in this case, unlike early week themes, you really do need to understand it or at least have an inkling about how it works in order to be able to fill in the clues because the answers, in terms of their uh, how they're strictly entered into the grid are incomplete. So there we go. We needed to understand this sort of visual pun, this sort of visual rebus almost in order to figure it out. And there we go, which we eventually did. That was the crossword for Thursday and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow with the, and let me know if any of the rest of you actually had any similar parsing difficulties with, with a few of these, a couple at least of these um, for, uh, different line formations. Anyway, that was that. That was the Thursday crossword. I'll be back tomorrow for a themeless Friday puzzle to join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care.